has sought to go beyond race, religion, ethnicity, gender, and culture. He is perhaps the most misunderstood, misrepresented, maltreated, and maligned person on the face of the earth. But that only is the stuff that makes him love all the more. He loves his enemies. He lives for the sake of others. And no cost is too great in order to bring back the family of God. He has committed his life to restoring us to God's true love, God's true life, and true lineage so that we look upon each other as brothers and sisters, one family under God. <laughs> Welcome, 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 everyone. God bless you on this Monday, first Monday of April in the Passion Week, uh, coming up to this Sunday, being our Resurrection Sunday. God bless you for joining us tonight on the program Chosen, produced by the American Clergy Leadership Conference. This program is uh, a study of the new wine, the new revelation that Jesus gave Father Moon uh, on Easter Sunday, beginning Easter Sunday, 1935. And that's why Easter is such a precious time. It's like he passed the baton on Easter in the early hours of Easter morning in 1935. Tonight, our program will be talking about Christology. But before we go into our program and his presentation, we're going to go to one of the National Chairwomen of Women in Ministry, a program of the American Clergy Leadership Conference, 
She's also the founder of White Eagle Ministries International. Please help me in joining uh, in bringing up uh, Reverend Marilyn Kotelek to offer our opening prayer tonight. Thank you, Reverend Dr. Mark Randis and all of our distinguished guests, Dr. Rouse, Bishop Jesse Edwards and Marie Rouse and everyone. Thank you so much. And our dear sister, Sylvia Carmen. Let us pray. Our gracious eternal father, we come to you in the mighty name of Jesus by the design of your Holy Spirit, hallelujah. And we just thank you, Father God, for the study tonight. It's not by power or by might, but it's by your spirit that we live and move and have our being. We thank you for Jesus, your only begotten son who came to show us the way. We thank you, Father, for the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. And we thank you that we're seated with you in heavenly places. We're heir to God and join heir with Jesus, so we're one in the spirit of the living God. We're co-creators of your spoken word. We thank you for that. Father, we thank you that we are risen with you. You said in your word, Father God, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, he shall live. So you live through, in, and with us, Lord. So open up our heart that we may be able to receive all that you have for us tonight. Fine tune our spiritual ear that we hear your voice clearly. And in your word, it says, renew our mind by the washing of your word. And we know your word is sharper than a two-edged sword, penetrating even the, the, bar, the, the bone bar in our spirits. So we thank you for your word. We thank you for your word as a lamp into our feet and a light into our path. Now we walk out in the confidence of who you are in us. We thank you for the presider tonight. Let your word come forth in power and demonstration. And we all agreed and we pray in the name of Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior in all of our names as we are your blessed central families of the Lord. Amen and on you. Amen. Aju, uh, thank you so much, Reverend Kotelek. Really appreciate your prayer starting us off today. Our presenter tonight is the national co-chair of the American Clergy Leadership Conference, Dr. Luan Abram Rouse, and he is continuing his presentation, his search into the exposition of the divine principles, uh, revelation on Christology, the study of Christ. The, and he's been looking at it in, in exciting ways. Uh, tonight, uh, I'm going to start preparing his presentation for you, for him, and invite him to Come forward now, Dr. Rouse. Thank you, Reverend Hernandez, for preparing this presentation. We'll get it all straight and deliberate with what's there. But before we do, let's talk about Jesus. <laughs> Who is Jesus to you? Marie and I are blessed to be disciples of Jesus. Jesus, the one who found no shame and understanding the relationship with God and establishing the oneness with God. Mm -hmm. The oneness with God as the ultimate of existence. The oneness with God with the power to continue to exist no matter what evil throws in the way. And this is the week of holiness where our Lord tri triumphantly entered what at the time was the holy city of holy cities, Jerusalem, to be acknowledged and recognized for who he is, but not all would be pleased with that recognition. One may ask the question why, is because Jesus was going in, not for the status quo, but Jesus was going in for the transformation of human lives. Therefore, the change that is to take place for the transformation of the social order, their environment, and for those as he would preach who were poor to become those who are the people of God who would work as peacemakers who would do all of the things 
to make for a better world. Well, we're not away from that today. We believe that the spirit of the Lord is here in the midst of what is happening in the world today with Ukraine and Russia. And before we give a laundry list of the nations that are having difficulty, let's just look in the mirror of our own. Yes. What is happening around this country? What is happening with us? What's our human relationships like today? Bishop Jesse Edwards and I, we, we've been having a good time this week, just talking with one another, praying together, shouting together for Palm Sunday, waving our palms and inviting others to do the same and yeah. kneeling and praying and bowing and lifting up holy hands, giving praises <laughs> to God for the life of Jesus Christ. For we do believe he not only triumphantly entered in what we recognize today, Palm Sunday, but he triumphantly enters into our lives today. So as we continue in Holy Week and recognize that some cheered at first, they continued some of the cheers, but the more he spoke about the need for change, they changed. And do not people do that today? But I tell you what, being a follower of Jesus Christ, we have the courageous audacity to do as Christ did, to go in the midst of the most horrible, horrific situations and say God is and to bring about the change. So we're going to talk about Jesus, Jesus in the midst of a fallen people, a fallen humanity, because that's what Christianity is about. But also, we're going to talk about the rebirth and the Trinity Amen. and how the change for all of the world can truly come about and we can be a part of this with Jesus. So Reverend Hernandez, let's yeah. do this. Bring it on. Okay. What will the slides say tonight? Therefore, brothers and sisters, let's look at this in the most powerful and wonderful way. I think, Reverend Hernandez, I may let you run the slides for the people, but perhaps go to my own. Okay. Can you still hear me? Yes, I can hear you fine. That's good, because if I go to my own, I get a larger print. Getting a larger print will help me to go through these with you in a good way so we can get to Jesse, Bishop Jesse Edwards' commentary and Dr. Hernandez' commentary, too. Are you ready? Oh, I don't hear you. Are you yes, ready? I'm ready. We're ready. <laughs> All right, let's go. Because Jesus came with the full value of a true person who has completed the purpose of creation. Angels and all things were put under his dominion. Jesus, having no original sin, had no condition in himself for Satan to invade him. Jesus thoroughly understood God's will and heart. He also experienced God's heart as his own reality in his daily life. A fallen person has nothing of value of a true person who has completed the purpose of creation. Rather, he has fallen to such a lowly status that he looks up to the angels, looking up to the angels who were created to be his subordinates. A fallen person with original sin is stained with the condition through which Satan can attack him. A fallen person cannot fathom the will and heart of God. At most, he can catch only a glimpse of them. Hence, a 
fall in person virtually has none of his original value as long as he remains in the fallen state. If, however, he were to be reborn, cleansed of the original sin, and become a good child through Jesus, the true parent, he would be restored as a true person who has perfected the purpose of creation like Jesus himself. Thus, Christ is the head of the church according to Ephesians, the first chapter, the 22nd verse, and we are his body and members. First Corinthians 12 chapter, the 27th verse. Jesus is the main temple and we are the branch temples. Jesus is the vine, and we are the branches. The Gospel of John, the 15th chapter, the fifth verse. We, the wild olive suits, are to be engrafted with Jesus, the true olive tree. Romans, the 11th chapter, the 17th verse. Before we can become true olive trees ourselves, now, we continue into the rebirth. As we go into the rebirth, however, let me remind us, all of us should have experienced what we just mentioned, Jesus dealing with fallen humanity. We are part of fallen humanity. I like to say, check yourself, or God will. Check what is going on in your personal existence. In fact, the true reality is, God is checking on us every day. Are we checking on ourselves? Be questioned. Jesus says, unless one is born anew, he cannot see the kingdom of God. The Gospel of John, the third chapter, the third verse. Why must fallen people be born anew? Had Adam and Eve realized the ideal of creation and become the true parents of humanity, they would have born good children without original sin and form the kingdom of heaven on earth. However, they fell and became evil parents, multiplying evil children. Hence, fallen people must be born anew as children without original sin. Now, this is not to say for us so let's not get too much in the blame game because blaming becomes a wasted energy. Plus, as we look back on this history of what the witness towards God has already been, let us remember that we must also deal with what the history in this current situation is being made of by what we are doing now. Check yourself. But God surely will. We cannot be born without parents. Parents with original sin cannot give birth to good children who are without original sin. Sinless parents must descend from heaven. And Jesus was the parent who came from heaven. He came as the true father in order to give rebirth to fallen people. Here it is, transforming them into good children. We need to write the word down, transformation. Don't leave it out of your understanding. Seek wisdom in studying transformation. Formation. Jesus came to give rebirth to 
fallen people, transforming them into good children. Don't go jumping and looking at that cross and just think, oh, I can get the cross. I can wear it around my neck. I can put it on my, my, my wrist. I can put it wherever you put that cross. Remember, the cross came to be a sign of a disgrace that God turned into a glorification as Jesus prayed against that cross, but said, thy will be done. Because Jesus was willing to do what? Anything that was necessary for God to be glorified. So God would not allow that which was meant for evil to win. So what was meant for our detriment, God has turned into good. And not just for us, remember that. God did it for the glorification of all the universe. The owner of the universe does not desire to be disgraced, nor for his created beings in his image to be disgraced. So Jesus came in a sinless parent state of being from heaven to be the parent to bring into humanity heaven's desire. He came as the true father in order to give rebirth to fallen, fallen people. Thirdly cleansed of original sin and fit to build the kingdom of heaven on earth. Lord, help us to be instruments of your peace. But through the American Clergy Leadership Conference, we have a responsibility, not to our individual selves, but we have a responsibility to our family, our community, to our nation, and yes, to the world. Send down your power right now, God. In the midst of this Zoom, send down your authority to change us. Cleanse our minds, cleanse our hearts, cleanse our souls that we may experience once again the truth that you have for us to understand our current responsibility within your good creation. It is written in 1 Peter, the first chapter, the third verse, by his great mercy, we have been born anew mm -hmm. to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Jesus came as the true father whom Adam had failed to become. For this reason, the Bible speaks of him as the last Adam, second Adam, last Adam. First Corinthians 15th chapter, 45th verse. And the everlasting father, Isaiah the ninth chapter, the sixth verse. Also Jesus said that he would return in his father's glory. The Gospel of Matthew, the 16th chapter, the 27th verse. However, since a father alone cannot give birth, help us, Holy Spirit, and these men who are trying to be anything other than a father, I won't go there, but you know the truth. Since a father alone cannot give birth, there must be a true mother as well as a true father. But fallen children need to be reborn. The Holy Spirit came as the true mother. This is why Jesus told Nicodemus that no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he, she is born anew through the Holy Spirit. Gospel of John, the third chapter, the fifth verse. Because the Holy Spirit comes as the true mother, our second Eve, 
there are many who have received the revelation that the Holy Spirit is feminine. Without first receiving the Holy Spirit, we cannot go before Jesus as his brides. Being feminine, the Holy Spirit consoles and moves the hearts of people. Romans, the fifth chapter, the first, fifth verse. She cleanses people's sin, thereby atoning for the sin which Eve committed. Jesus, the masculine Lord, works in heaven by the Holy Spirit. His feminine a counterpart works on earth, yang and yang. Logos is Greek for the rational principle of the word. John, the first chapter, the first verse indicates that the Logos is an object partner to God engaged in a reciprocal relationship with God. Since God, the subject partner of the Logos, exists with dual characteristics, the Logos as his object partner should also be composed of dual characteristics, Adam and Eve the embodied object partners of God in image were created separately out of the dual characteristic of the Logos. That's important for us. Don't lose it. A lot of people ask questions surrounding this. The answer becomes simple when you really look at it in this way. Adam and Eve the image of God represents separately the dual characteristics. What the word, what is the word made flesh other than the locus, God, the essence, the reality, the essentiality of God. Had Adam realized the ideal of creation and become the tree of life and had Eve as a woman realized the ideal of creation and fulfilled the tree of knowledge of good and evil, they would have stood together as the true parents of humanity. Glory only if it had been the glory that Jesus Christ has come, that it might be fulfilled even more so. As God has now been glorified through Jesus Christ, glory be the mission of those who come to, to be true parents, to raise true children in the true world that belongs to the owner of the universe. That's our work, brothers and sisters. We need to teach this and live this. They would have fulfilled God's three great blessings and established the kingdom of God on earth. Instead, they fail. This world became an earthly hell. Why? They fail. Therefore, to give rebirth to fallen people, Jesus came as the second Adam, the true father of humankind, with the mission symbolized by the tree of life. This being the case, should not there also have come the true mother of humanity, the second Eve with the mission 
symbolized by the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The one who has come as the true mother is the Holy Spirit. When we believe in Jesus as the Savior, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, the third verse. We receive the true love of the spiritual true parents generated through the gift, give and take between Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Through this love, new life, is infused into us. Get it again. Get it again. We're coming up to it. You're going to really, you, you're going to have, if you digest this, everything you need to talk to people about the truth of God in the Trinity, how God has established this for all of us, that if we only come into it to become true children, and in becoming true children, it doesn't stop. We must become as true parents. And in the giving of birth, our procreation then becomes that of what? True children, instead of the children of the fallen nature. Through this love, new life is infused into us. And our spirits are reborn as new selves. This is spiritual rebirth. To fulfill the purpose of creation, Jesus and the Holy Spirit must form the four position foundation with God as the center. Follow this closely. Something most powerful is, is coming about for us to understand in the mission of Father and Mother Moon in the mission we have to keep. It's like the promise. It's like the charge. It's like saying a charge to keep. I have a God to do what? Glorify. That's what Jesus understood. And in this Holy Week, we are praying and hoping that all of us will come to receive and understand it's not just Jesus. This story is about us glorifying God too. God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit that's become one. And this oneness constitute the Trinity. If Adam and Eve had not fallen, but had formed this Trinity with God and become the true parents who could multiply good children, each of their descendants, would also have formed a trinity with God. Instead, when Adam and Eve fell, they formed a four position foundation with Satan as their center. In other words, they formed a fallen trinity with Satan. Their descendants likewise have continued to form trinities with Satan, and so built a corrupt and immoral society. Brothers and sisters, God is counting on us. Let's do this thing. Let's come from under the influence of Satan and don't look and talk about whether unification or any other faith. We're now talking about unification faith and the emergence of unification faith within world religions. That's where we need to go. That's where we should have been. And that's where we need to stay now. Jesus and the Holy Spirit in oneness with God to form only a spiritual trinity and fulfill 
only the mission of spiritual true parents. Thus, people of faith still remain true spiritual children of God. Hence, Christ must return in the flesh and find his bride. They will form on the earth a perfect trinity with God and become true parents, both spiritually and physically. They will give fallen people spiritual and physical rebirth, removing the original sin and enabling them to build trinities on earth with God as the center. When fallen people are restored to the point where they can establish true position, four position foundations centered on God, our central figure, centered on God, they will finally be able to build the kingdom of heaven on earth where God's three great blessings are fulfilled. Somebody ought to say glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Where we are today. And to understand it better, let us summarize, summarize and say, Bishop Edwards, come on in here. You and I are going to be talking to people more and more about Christology and anything else that comes along. We're going to bring people into this fullness of understanding because they need to understand the Trinity and everything else that's been thrown at them theologically through a religious study that says, bring it into every culture of existence. Yes, bring yes, it in yes. that all of our children everywhere may know that through Jesus, in the yes. teachings of Jesus, we overcome death, we resurrect into yes. a new life. Yes. Take it over, brother, and you oh. and Dr. Hernandez, do your thing. <laughs> Dr. Rouse, again, you got me rocking in my seat here. The Holy Ghost is so powerful in this little room where I, I think the ceiling's coming off here. You have just sent so much word, so much of that sharp two-wedged sword. Man, uh, we're not, we're not going to be able to cover it all, but we're going to cover a little bit here. Next Sunday is Easter Sunday. We're talking about Resurrection Day when Jesus came out of the tomb. But you know what? I, I just got to thinking while you were talking, Dr. Rouse, Jesus spoke to me. He said, hey, Jess, you know, you forget the three days I spent in that tomb when I went to the belly of hell, when I fought a battle against Satan and took the keys of death and hell and the grave. For three days, Jesus was battling Satan. And what was he battling him for? To get the keys out of Satan's possession. And you know, I've always said, well, what in the world are the keys that Jesus would take from Satan? And then I go back to Genesis. When the serpent, the archangel, tempted Eve, and he tempted her, and she lost her lineage. Satan stole the lineage, the identity, the power of God's family. And he said one thing. He said, the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent, there would be enmity between them. And it went further and it said that he, being Jesus, shall bruise the serpent's head and the serpent shall bruise his heel. Dr. Rouse, I believe Satan was rest, wrestling with Jesus. Revelation says he wanted war because of what he had. But Jesus took the keys of death and hell. You know what those keys were, Dr. Rouse? They were the keys to our Heavenly Father's lineage. They were the DNA of our family. They were the bloodline that we should live and walk in. That John 3 and 5 said, you must be born again. Wow, when he came out of that grave with those keys, you know what? They crucified Jesus. Satan was having a victory, but Jesus said, don't worry, it ain't going to last long because I got my servant, the true parents. They're waiting for the keys. They're waiting for the transmission and the transformation of the old man to the new 
transformed, restored, true children of God. All of earth is going to rejoice. All the earth is going to get excited because this is the day that the true sons of God are about to manifest to this world that not only Jesus is Lord, but he's returned with a new lineage, with new life, with new hope. You know what the keys are they represent? Keys represent eternal church authority. God has given true parents eternal authority through his lineage, through his bloodline, and he can restore the whole earth back to his family. And we, oh my goodness, Brother Mark, we can really now become not only reborn, but the true children of God. Woo! Man, I, I'm excited here. I, I can hardly sit in this chair, but I'm telling you what, Dr. Rouse, we're going to take this to the world. We got to get it on the airways. We got to get it. While we're talking here, a TV station just texted me and said, call me at your earliest chance. We got to get the word on the airways and out to a world that Jesus is not only living through true parents, he can live through us, through true mm -hmm. love, true life, and true lineage. Somebody ought to praise God. Amen. Amen. Go ahead, Brother Mark. I'm not going to take up all the time. Praise the, the Lord, everybody. Everybody, praise the Lord. Wow. Wow. Just before you started speaking, you know, <laughs> when you mentioned that he went down there to battle for the keys, I wrote down true love, true life, and true lineage. <laughs> I was like, that was what Jesus was really battling for so that he... You know, and how did he get that? He got that really because his last words on the cross at the moment that everyone else would have given up hope. Yes. He cried. He cried out to God to forgive us. Thank you, Lord. He cried out to forgive us. That was such an enormous victory of true love. Yes. And because he was the embodiment of that lineage. He had come as the true father. He had the claim for it. He claimed it right there with those words. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. That's what a parent, how the parent covers their child. You know, that's the heart of a parent toward their child. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. That's not the, uh, a, a, a master and a servant. Yes. That is so proof. That is such proof that Jesus came in the role to be our true father. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Today I was, I was looking up, you know, those so many times, you know, when the, when the scribes and Pharisees, when they're, uh, when I think uh, he had just called Levi and they're having a meal and, and they, they can't, they're so disturbed that Jesus is there, you know, having a meal with them. Yeah. Just says that, uh, can you make the friends of the bridegroom fast while he is with them? Jesus identifies himself as a bridegroom, not as just a special guest, but as a bridegroom. Right, right. Oh, yes, Can you God. make the friends of the bridegroom yes. fast while he was with them? They don't answer. Mm. But Jesus goes on, he says, but the time will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them. My Lord, then they my... will fast. <laughs> Eat, preacher. <laughs> Then they will fast. Yes. Oh, my God. You know, these kind of precious words from Jesus where he refers to himself. Yes, it's metaphorical, but he's speaking right to those Pharisees. And he's describing himself, the bridegroom. And while he is with him, yes, no, his disciples cannot fast because he is with them. He's feasting with them, but there will be a day when he is taken away. Then they will fast. <clears throat> and then there's the, the parable uh, in Matthew 22, 1 through 14, where Jesus gives a parable about a great king or a great man who has a son who is what? It's his wedding feast, his wedding banquet. And all the invited ones come forth with so many excuses mm. not to come to the banquet. 
There's a song we used to sing called, I cannot come. I cannot come to the banquet. Don't trouble me now. I have married a wife. I have bought me a cow. I have fields and commitments that cost a pretty sum. Hey, hold me excused. I cannot come. Yes. Who are those chosen people? Chosen to come to the bridegroom's wedding to the who is the who's the great king? That's God. Whose marriage is it? They're meant to attend mm. the marriage of our Lord Jesus. Jesus. But we we couldn't see this. Our eyes were closed to this. We just saw it as some interesting parable. Some people look at that parable and say, oh, it's all about the fact that, well, those chosen people don't come, so other people are called, and it's just a really diverse group of people that come, and so God is proclaiming universalism. Well, that's great. God is, you know, God is a universal God, and he wants all people to come to his son, but why would he want them to come, right, to the marriage blessing? Because his son, his son was destined to find that woman that God had prepared. Yes, yes. Who could be... Jesus' true spouse. Yes. Well, thank you. And all the Jewish people, all their history would have been fulfilled. Yes. In attending the bridegroom's yes. wedding feast. The yes. wedding feast. You can't have a, a wedding feast without a bride and a bridegroom. Or a bridegroom and a bride. You can't. And just as you were saying, Dr. Ross, we can't be reborn just through a man. Not through a man. We're reborn through a father and mother. We're born oh, through man. that beautiful union of a yes. father and mother. Yes. So tonight we are really, we're digging into just incredible jewels. And this Amen. kind of understanding would really help us to Amen. meet our Lord Jesus at the yes. moment of his resurrection on Sunday to know that 2,000 years ago, he was meant to be. We were meant to feast with the bridegroom. Yes. Not fast in his absence. Yes. Jesus. We were, meant, we were meant to be, you know, Thank you. think about it. Had the Jewish people answered the call and come to God's wedding feast for his son, then all yes. the prophecy of, you know, of of Abraham blessing all the people of the world would have come true through Jesus, through our Lord yes. Jesus and his wife. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. So, yes. Thank you for sharing that, uh, Bishop yes. Edwards, the, you know, yes. that revelation that what did he go there? What did he really, what did Jesus really extract through his getting victory in love? What did he extract? Something had to be given up. Yes, that's yes. right. Yes. And Jesus got it. You really... That is amazing revelation to you that Jesus got it in those yes. three days. Yes. yes. He got yes. True, love, yes. true life and true lineage. Yes. And he got the right to pass it on to yes. right? someone who would overcome like him. So that we might also receive it, you know, as overcomers ourselves. Wow. Wow. Amen. Yes. Amen. I think I've been hearing. I think I've been hearing Dr. Jenkins' voice every now and then. Amen, <laughs> amen. Jenkins, uh, <laughs> you're always welcome to uh, make a comment here. You are the uh, foundations of the American Clergy Leadership Conference. So I'm going to go to the gallery. Uh, please, uh, if you have a comment to make, Dr. Jenkins. Oh, that's so nice of you. Thank you, Dr. Rouse. Uh, teaching about uh, Christology and. And the fact that rebirth should have occur occurred uh, through uh, the whole idea of that Jesus is the true father and the Holy Spirit's a true mother. And when we believe, I love that part of the principle that most people don't realize is there. When we believe in Jesus and the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. when we believe in them, then we can be born again. Mm -hmm. And that's really the essence of uh, the whole concept of true parents. But because as, as Reverend Hernandez and Jesse, Jesse's on, Doc, <laughs> uh, as, 
I, I just am so grateful for this time of studying the word, but you know, Jesus and the Holy Spirit, that's that's so real. Everybody knows that the Holy Spirit's a comforting spirit, the comforter. And uh, but we we haven't really realized, you know, about that whole masculine feminine element the pattern of god mm -hmm. that should have occurred in the beginning yes. with adam and eve so now we have that anointing of jesus and the holy spirit on true parents and now the anointing on the clergy mm -hmm. and also the anointing on every couple we're bringing through the the process of uh, the chumbo path and it's really beautiful beautiful thing thank you aclc mm -hmm. thank you so much this is eternal value yeah. thank you yeah 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 Amen. god bless you god bless you god bless you god, oh, bless, god bless you the reverend god dr bless. katulik god bless oh, the reverend man. dr michael jenkins and dr rako jenkins <laughs> my beautiful <laughs> wife <Yeah>. marie <laughs> i love you you know dr hernandez and bishop edwards thank you thank everybody that's listening Bishop Edwards knows this. I've been talking about it. It's Holy Week. And I still take Holy Week where I am in my walk to look at where God has brought me from. Yes. And admittedly, there have been times in my life where some people thought it was arrogance, but it wasn't. It was just I was living free from sin. But when you experience sin, and you really recognize that you've experienced sin. It's, it's an humbling experience when you know who God is. Because yeah. you recognize the only way that you can come out of that is that God brings you through. Oh, gosh, and this that. week I've been talking to Bishop Edwards and others and explaining when, when, I, when I went through a divorce, Mm. It wasn't that I thought, oh gosh, I'm going to, I'm, I'm divorced and I'm free. It's a death experience. Mm. It's a oh, pain my, 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 my. like no pain I ever experienced. It is. And I was sinking deep in sin, as the song says, <laughs> away from a peaceful shore. But then it also says, mm. the master of the sea. <laughs> the master. Huh? delivered me. That's how I'm blessed with Marie. And going in that sin, I needed the power of the Holy Spirit to make me the man yes. that I thought I was but needed to be. And it is because of the power of the Holy Spirit that touched members of my church that said to me, you need to be married again. <laughs> they understood all of your preaching and teaching before, and you didn't believe in divorce. And I said, I don't believe in it now, or even more so that I've experienced it. But who will God bless me with to come out of this hell? And he blessed me with Marie. And father and mother blessed us. Amen. And together as disciples of Jesus Christ under the blessing from true parents, we're in the truth. We can live, be delivered. I can praise God <laughs> that he thought enough of me to take me out of that drowning water. I could picture it to take me out of the hell that I was in to bring me to true holy, sacred ground. Wow. Let me tell you something. We continue into this week when you come all the way through and the resurrection takes place after Jesus has gone down as Bishop Edwards preached for us the night and delivered. Don't forget this part right here. <laughs> when the resurrection had occurred, in the time of dwelling and teaching even more on earth. See, it didn't end with the seven last words on the cross. No. There's a whole no. body of sermons after that resurrection. 
Jesus told, and here's where I want us to come with this. Jesus told his disciples, you can't do it just with me, guys. It is not just with a true father, guys. You got to have a true mother. Bishop, you ever thought about that? Mm. He says, you guys got to go to the upper room. Got to, got to. Wait for the true mother to come. Mm. Wow. You know? When Ooh. true father ascended. You know, Marie and I came even fuller into what we appreciated. Dr. Jenkins, the Jenkins couple, they know when Father and Mother Moon touched us here <laughs> in, in Las Vegas. They, they, yeah. they know that experience and what it did to us and what it's done for me. But there is more to the story. That's great. Mm -hmm. In the ending of his preaching, true Father set it up that we would be ready for the woman to be in charge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're going to be in charge. Yes. Wait. Yep. Lead you, guide you. And I'm saying to everybody on this call tonight mm -hmm. the way that Jesus dealt with fallen humanity, wow. true parents of death, with us in our brokenness and wow. our fallenness, mm -hmm. and the woman in charge, the Holy Spirit. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we Whoa. have the true mother. Man. Hallelujah. Oh, Hallelujah. Wonderful. <laughs> Glory. Wonderful. Hallelujah. Yes. 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 Holy Spirit's yes. moving. So much yes. love here. Yes. Yes. Amen. So, Dr. Rayco Jenkins, close us out in prayer tonight as a true woman of God, true mother. Thank you, Dr. Ross. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Dear Heavenly Parents, what a beautiful evening. Thank you so much for bringing exposition of divine principle yes, through yes, this yes, month. Yes. Thank you so much for uh, bringing us together, pastors and brothers and sisters. We're so grateful that knowing that where we are, who we are, and we are in this midst of yes. God's providence to bring God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Thank you so much for true parents, bringing mm. true parents on this earth. When Adam and Eve could not fulfill the calling that the Adam and Eve become true parents, but it didn't happen. But Jesus wished to become true parents on the earth. Yeah. For God cried out. God was so sad when Jesus had to go, Father. And now we are so grateful for mm. Jesus' sacrifice. We are here together yes, to bring true parents yes, on the earth yes. and all God's people, God's children can come to enter the kingdom of heaven on earth as it is in heaven with the Jesus great, great history sacrifice that making this happen. Yes, and true God. mother, yes, thank you, God. true mm -hmm. mother, stand strong for such a hard, hard course that she has gone through, but she's standing strong to be able to bring all God's children to come together for your kingdom. Thank you for this beautiful evening. I pray in the name of Jesus and true man's name. Yes. My great James, the central family. Amen. 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 And I do. Thank wow. you, everybody. Wow. 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 Thank, Thank you, you everyone. everyone. Wow. Thank you. Holy week. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Ross. Ross. Holy week, Ross. everyone. Bishop Jesse. God Reverend bless you. Dr. Mark. Bishop Mark. Ross. Reverend Goran. God bless you all. Yes, Pastor John. Amen. Amen. Bless Thank you, God bless you. Yes, Pastor John. Thank you, Holy Week. <laughs> Resurrection Sunday. God bless you all, everyone. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Thank so you, Dr. Mark. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Wow. Thank you, Bishop Edwards. Bishop Jesse Edwards. That was so precious to us. Man. Wow. Glory. <laughs> Glory. <laughs> Thank you, women in ministry, for opening us in prayer yes. and closing us in <laughs> prayer. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Oh, Gail. Oh, young Gail. 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 Too. Gail. Bless you. I see you. Yeah. Man, this is <laughs> something else. That's wonderful. Oh, Bless man, you. those ACLCs have got the anointing. Amen. Wow. wow. Brothers wow. and sisters. Yeah.
Praise so much. God. I'm coming out of the desert to be with ACLC <laughs> in the springtime. <laughs> the spring water. Boy. I'm on the biggest Living water. God bless. Man. Oh. Uh, Direction. Bye. 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 Bye.